Hello all. Welcome to Vishwachis uh, Academy. Today we are going to understand the Sicilian dragon. And there are majorly two played, two uh, openings played in Sicilian dragon. One is uh, Yugoslav attack and second is classical dragon. So this is two majorly uh, well-known openings are there. If you see this diagram, this is a structure like dragon. Now the interesting why it's called Sicilian dragon. Uh, so it's like this is the style of the pawn chain looks like a dragon. So if you put on C5 pawn, so this tail and uh, this is uh, like considered like a dragon. So let's let's go for the Sicilian dragon opening and let's study the dragon. Let me set up the board. Dragon is black side opening. So let's flip the board here and it is start against the E4. So whenever white played E4 and taking control of the center, which is um, commonly played opening from the, any white side in the world. So E4 and here the when we play C5, it's called Sicilian. So here we are not replying directly uh, attack in the center, but indirectly we are still controlling the center square, which is the D4. So we played C5. And we are not challenging white in the uh, directly by playing e5, but we are playing c5 and objective the same control the center. The next move, white will continue nf3, which is very standard move. Black will play d6. Now, why to play d6? Uh, our objective to play nf6, but the problem is if you play nf6, the white will push the pawn, and we have to go back. So to avoid this move, we will play first d6. There is a very famous game played by uh, Bobby Fisher. And uh, he beat a well-known uh, U.S. Grandmaster in just 17 moves just because he didn't play the D6. So D6 is very, very important move where you are supporting to pawn also. And now you are ready to play NF6. White will play D, uh, D4. Now here is the option. White can play Bishop B2 and simple go for the castle. But this is little passive style from the white side. And white generally wants to go for the attacking chase against the dragon. Because dragon itself a very attacking opening. And uh, if you don't play attacking against dragon, like the black is black will easily get equality and black will be fabulous in the middle game. So D4. And now what to do? Yes, of course, you should take it whenever you get a opening center pawn. You should take it because if you don't take it, like take an example, if you play knight f6, he will capture, capture, and then you won't be able to castle in this game. So whenever your opponent give a center pawn, just take it. C takes D and now knight takes D. We'll continue to develop our pieces like nf6, very standard move, nc3. And here, uh, the most commonly played in the world is a6. a6 is very famous. This is we call Najrov, Sicilian Najrov. But here, we are not learning Najrov. We are learning the dragon opening, which is start with the g6. White having, uh, white can go bishop b2 and castle. This is called classical line where black easily get equality and everything depends on the middle game. But here, uh, white is going to play bishop b3. And this is again very aggressive choice from the white side because see, you can easily understand white is developing the queen side pieces first, not the king side pieces. So if white could go bishop b2, then white definitely going for the short castle. But white is playing long castle, means he's planning to go for the long castle. That's why he's developed this bishop. Now, many, many players, you know, uh, many players uh, do this mistake here in the opening. They immediately jump for the bishop to g knight to g4 and attack on this bishop. Of course, you should attack, uh, but not before complete your development. Now, suppose let's let's consider here if black play knight to g4. Looks like this bishop is you know de defending this knight. Not, no problem from the black side, and now white has to white has to save his bishop. Now, if I pause, if you uh, if I ask you to pause this video. And the question is, why to play and win the piece? So there is a small tactic we need to understand here. Why to play win the piece? And just pause the video and find out the best combination or best uh, move from the white side. The move is bishop to d5. Now the problem is, if you play knight d7, of course, this knight will lose his support. And if you play bishop d7, still queen takes g4 will come. Problem is the, this bishop cannot take this queen because now it's been pinned by the bishop. And even if you take bishop takes bishop, knight is strongly supporting this bishop. So the black is immediately losing this piece. And that's why rule number five, we have discussed it earlier also. Do not play same piece twice in the opening. 
So this is very, very important rule. That's why we will go Bishop G7. Now, what should white play? White can easily go Queen D2, but again, now there is a problem here. If you play Queen D2 now, Knight G4 can come. Bishop to F4 is not possible because it's a fork. Bishop G5 having a problem with the H6. And now this bishop not in the same diagonal or there is no battery. So to avoid this, white generally play f3. Not allowing your not allowing black to play knight g4. Now black will simple should simply go for the castle. This is the best move in this position. White will continue to develop his queen side pieces and go for the long castle. Queen d2. And now here we need to develop the next piece, knight c6. Here, white having two options with the Yugoslav attack. One is white can go bishop c4 and without bishop c4. So please, if you are making a notes here, write down there are two variations with the Yugoslav attack is with bishop c4 and without bishop c4. We'll see both the lines first. First, let's see the with bishop c4. This is mostly played line. Means if you see the game in database uh, and there are 60-70% players played bishop c4 line because this is a common or main line. Now what to play against it? Again, let's go develop our pieces first. Bishop d7. bd7. And now white will simple go castle. And white is very clear that white is planning to play h4, h5, trade this pawn, bishop h6, trade this bishop, and now attack on this side because the queen rook file will be open. And this is a clear style of white here to attack in this game. Now, what should black play? Black should also give some tempo move like RC8. Very, very important move. Sometimes black played A6 also. Uh, this is also a possible move. This is called drag and drop. Why is it drag and drop? Because here black is playing A6 also. And black is having the structure of dragon also. So... But this is little slow, like a6, then we will play b5, bishop b3. Uh, but the best move in this position is rc8. You are asked the question, you know, why rc8? There is no direct attack, but there is an indirect attack on the king. And here there is one trap also. If white start attacking here by playing h4, I will ask you again, pause the video. There is a second trap in this opening. Black to play and win the piece. Just pause your video. And find out black to play win the piece. Now in this game, if you found this, okay, yeah. If you find this move, knight takes knight, brilliant. This is the black is immediately winning the piece. Of course, bishop takes knight is not possible because rook takes bishop will come. So he has to go queen takes knight and then discover attack by playing knight g4. The white cannot take this knight on g4. And now this is queen under attack. Queen has to go d3. His queen is overloaded piece because now the queen is supporting the both the bishops here at the same time. But the problem will knight takes bishop. Now the here white has to take it and then rook takes bishop and white is clearly uh, lost in this position. He is uh, one piece down. A material advantage, big material advantage for the black side. Let's go. So what is the best move in this position? Not to play h4 or g4. Here white simply go for the bishop to b3. And this is the 11th move. And here black need to select which line we should go. Whether we should go for knight e5 variation. Or this is called again, you know, most of the, if you see the Kaspro game, Kaspro has played knight to e5. But in 2002, the uh, Popolo played one uh, nice variation, knight takes knight. And this is name on the Topolo. This is because the Topolo played first time, invented this line, novelty. Knight takes d4. This is called the polo variation. I would suggest this is safest variation from the black side. Here, of course, there are a lot of tricks and traps here. But if black played decent well, then this game will be ended as a draw. Or it is favorite to the you know black side. The black having a lot of chances to win this game. Because after this bishop takes, before white attack on the queen king side of the black, black started tracking by playing b5. And now let's see white started with the h4. Black will continue with the e5. If white continue to go h5, this is also a, a logical variation. Here white can play e3 also. This is also possible. Even he can play e4 also. This is also variation. Uh, let's see if he start continue uh, with the h5. Then the problem with the white is here 
a4 and now there is no, no not enough squares for this white color bishop so bishop to d5 need to play and black will continue to play e6 the bishop will go to the b7 took b8 and bishop having only one square bishop to a6 and here the next move is queen a5 and this bishop is trapped and again white is a piece round of course, white is have some counter pay, play here, but still, this is very difficult to manage with the piece down. So, after b5, let's see a4, and after pawn push, if white play this pawn push a4, this is also one line, then immediately we should capture, this is a second variation here, if we play a4. Now, just we have seen the h5 line, now let's see the a4, a5, a4 line. Now, in a4, we'll go for pawn takes a4. And here, white is an option like bishop takes or knight takes. And let's see bishop takes a4. Or think here, now there is a knight takes a4, bishop takes a4. And if we take knight takes a4, let's for a minute, we'll go bishop takes a4, bishop takes. And here, can you find out the best position move here? Take a minute, what should black play here in this position? Yes, of course. If you found this move, rook to c4, wonderful. Now this bishop is hanging. He need to take back this bishop or b3. So bishop, and again there is a wonderful move. Can you find out the next move from the black side? The black to play win the bees. Pause the video. Find out the move. The move is knight takes e4. Now this Queen is under pressure. He cannot take the rook. He cannot take the bishop. He need to take the knight only. And then rook takes bishop. And simply here, the black is completely winning position. He need to play the queen. And again, you can just continue with the queen b6. Now, again, discover attack. He has he has to go for... If you take rook takes again, you will take the bishop takes. And now next move, you will push the pawn. And again, winning the game. And if you play rook d1 also, the problem is, we will continue to play a4. And now bishop takes a4 is not possible in losing the piece. Now, if you play the bishop back, rook takes d1, it's a, sorry, rook takes d1, it's a check. King takes d1, and this is game is almost win for the black. Queen takes b2, and I don't think so white can survive from this position. Let's go back. Now, if we take bishop takes, what to do? Again, bishop takes a4 will do, knight takes a4, and same position will come rook c4. Now here you need to play uh, pawn push. Again, knight takes e4, pawn takes e4, and bishop takes. Again, instead of bishop, we are, uh, you know, he, instead of bishop here, we are uh, taking this center pawn. And again, black is winning this game. Now, after a4, if white played a3, this is also a playable move. But here we'll continue pawn takes, pawn push, pawn takes, pawn takes, pawn takes, and knight d5. Here we'll take, uh, we can take knight takes d5. White will go bishop takes g7, king takes g7, and e takes d5, sorry, e takes d5. And now what to play here? There are two lines we can go, uh, the you know, computer suggested king g8, but I would recommend it to go uh, c5 here. Or you can directly start attacking by queen e5. Just go for the attack and, you know, if you make any mistake, it's going to be a checkmate. So queen check, king has to go back. And now the he will continue with the h5. Uh, we have a nice move here, bishop c, bishop to f5. And if suppose if you take pawn takes, then you will have a bishop. And this is a very strong position. Because now white doesn't have any bishop here. He cannot attack here in this position. And suppose if you try to play g4, this game is lost for the black. Now how is lost? Bishop takes c2. Now, b takes c2, and now here the b3. If you play rook here, the problem is this is going to be a checkmate. So, he has to go king d2, but the problem with the king d2, can he cannot play, so, sorry, it's like queen is there. So, queen d, king d2 is not possible, and this is a loss, like what he will play. Uh, let's, let's see uh, if you play king here, but the problem is, again, this is going to be a checkmate. Rook takes c2. So this position is very difficult uh, for the white. Like if you play uh, rook to h2, 
then now you can play rook c5. There is one possibility here. And the plan is to play make a double rook. Of course, if you push the h6, just play f6 and stop this. There is no checkmate here. And now we are going to play rc8. And this is impossible to stop. Like, what he will do? Like, there is no good move from this uh, white side. Now, all the variation is almost uh, black winning in this after this position. And uh, this is a Yugoslav attack. And here, how we should continue the game. Uh, let's see in this position, uh, white continue with the knight. Uh, let's see, pawn push. And uh, white played knight d5 here. We'll go knight takes d5 immediately. Bishop takes g7, king takes g7. And now, uh, pawn takes here. But problem is with the a4, this bishop will get trapped. So here, he need to go bishop takes. But again, e6, the same problem, bishop b7, rook b8, uh, bishop a6, and now rook b6. Now, queen takes pawn is not possible, and bishop is again trapped. Again, white is going to be pieced down. So, white need to be very careful in this position. Okay, one more. Uh, knight takes knight, bishop takes, and when you play b5, what happens if a bishop takes pawn? This is a free pawn. But again, this is a very danger for the white because now we will continue with to play b4. Knight d5, very forced move. Knight takes d5. E takes d5. And we'll go queen a5. So now bishop need to move back. Bishop to e3. And here, if I ask you, take the tomb rate and find out the best continuation from the black side. Best positional or best, best uh, critical move in this position. Black to play win the game. Pause the video and find out the best move here. The move here is rook to c3. Fantastic. Now, if he, if he capture this, this is gonna this is gonna lose. Like even bishop takes attack on the queen. Even the b takes is also like if you move the queen, this is check, and this is checkmate. Suppose he didn't capture it. Like, let's see if we play bishop d4. He said, okay, I won't capture it. But the problem is rook takes b3 will come here. Now, if you take pawn takes, this is going to be a checkmate. If you take this pawn takes, rc8, and this is again a problem because now king uh, to b1 and now bishop f5 check. Here, and can you find out black to play made in 3? Pause the video, find out the made in 3. Yes, the move here is queen takes pawn. King takes and this is going to be a end of the story. This is a checkmate. Okay. Now, if bishop e3, bishop d4, let's see bishop d4 in this position. Then again, I'll ask you, pause the video and find out the best move from the black side here. We are trying to cover all the Yugoslav important traps in this position. Here is a very beautiful move. You can you just pause the video and find out the move. Black to play win the game. Take a five minutes for this position. Yeah, if you found the move, rook takes c2. Wonderful. So, problem is queen takes c2 is rc8. And now queen is trapped. And if you take bishop takes, then queen takes a2. And now there is a checkmate. You can see this position, queen a, queen a1 and like bishop and rc8. This is going to be a checkmate. So, queen e3 is a force move here. And then we'll go rc8. Now, if you go bishop takes g7, for example, then bishop a4, again attacking on this bishop. Pawn push will not work because bishop takes pawn will come. Queen is not powerful here. And now, how to continue in this position? If you play rook, this is going to be a checkmate. Again, we have the same story. Now, uh, how he will continue? Like, if he support with the bishop, the rook takes c2 will come. And this is again, again, lost the game. So, after rc8, bishop takes bishop is not possible. The only move here is king to d2. It's the only move. And it's very difficult to find out for any, any um, you know, a rated player who is below 2000. Very difficult to find out such kind of moves. Uh, mostly player will, will uh, play here like, you know, they will go bishop takes g7 or even they will go rook d1. And then the problem with the b3. And now if you play king d1, this is game again lost. Rook takes c2. This is almost lost game. So in this position, the move here is after this king d2. And here, 
white continue to give this black continue to give one more sack rook take c2 king takes c2 and now queen c4 check now problem is he cannot go king to b1 because bishop f5 check will come this game is lost so king has to go on d2 and then bishop takes d2 too Queen d3 wanted to go for exchange, but definitely will not get, go for exchange. Queen takes d5. Now, if you see this game, the white is having two rooks against black is having two bishops. But these two bishops are actually more powerful than, than two rooks. And now he need to go back. Let's see, he played here. And now we'll just play e5 and support this bishop. Nobody can move this bishop from this position. And this bishop is useless. And if you see this position, like bishop c4 is coming, bishop f5 is coming. And this pawn is like also hanging like anytime this queen can go and take this pawn also. And this is this will be very soon passer. White cannot play h4 also, which is which is very dangerous because now the queen c5 will come. Uh, we can immediately stop this also. Immediately, uh, like because now g4 cannot work, it's not possible because now queen c5. Uh, you can clearly see this position. Like if we capture this pawn and then bishop to b5 check. Can you see that? Bishop b5, bishop f2, bishop f2 is a nice move, but there is bishop b5. And now if you move the queen here, this is, you can see this bishop e3. And see, there is no move for the queen. Like if you move the queen anywhere, you can see this position is completely bad for the white. It's, it's like bishop f4 and next move is going to be a checkmate. So this is very difficult position. Like, let's see if we capture this pawn, queen e3 check, and there is no square for this queen. Like, if he enter, he cannot uh, just block this check also. Let's go back to this position. And this is a uh, Sicilian dragon, very aggressive opening. So uh, we have discussed almost all important line. Like, if you take bishop takes pawn, how to continue with this line? And uh, if you play like h4 this is like a5 and this is how in short in 30 minutes i will i try to cover almost all the important keys and all the important uh, uh, aspect of this opening all the traps all the tricks of if you study this opening even this material is equal like this material is equal to almost half of the book which is all the moves i have mentioned in this game the next part i will i will show the d5 break if white does not go for bishop c4 line. So this is a bishop c4 Yugoslav attack. Next next video, we'll see the more in about this opening.